thank the Lord for today. Amen. Amen. And today we're looking at the purpose for which Christ came to the earth. Amen. Amen. Now, in everything that you do in life, there is a purpose for doing what you do. Amen. Amen. So, the question that we're asking ourselves today is that why did Jesus come down to the earth? Why did Jesus come into this world? For what purpose did he come? Amen. Amen. Now, let's read John chapter 14. Verses, 11, verses 7 to 11. And we're looking at the first purpose for which Jesus came to the world. And I read, If you really knew me, you would know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Anyone who has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Hallelujah. Amen. So the first purpose for which Jesus came down to this earth was to show us the Father, or what to show us what God is like. Amen? Amen. And in John chapter 14, Jesus says, you know, Jesus tells his disciples, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. The words that I've spoken to you are not my own words, but they are the words of the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Now, as believers, Jesus lives in us. And can we tell people, can we tell people that we come in contact with? Can we tell the people that we meet every day? Can we tell our colleagues and friends that when you meet with me, You've met, you know, so to speak, Jesus. Because you are exhibiting the character of Jesus. And therefore, your friends can copy or learn from you. Jesus told the disciples, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Why? He was exhibiting the character of the Father. Can you say that you are exhibiting the character of Jesus Christ? How do people see you? The first mission or the first purpose of Jesus was to let people see how God is like. And your mission as a Christian is also to let the world see how Jesus is like. When people see you, do they see the characteristics of Jesus in you? So whilst we are answering the question of the purpose of Jesus Christ here on earth or in this world, we are also answering the question, the purpose of believers in this world. Because whatever Jesus came down to do here in this world, he left it for us to do it. To continue. And therefore, if Jesus showed forth the Father, are we as believers showing forth the Son? Do the people that come in contact with you, can they say conveniently that yes, this person that we met is a woman of God. This person that we've met is a man of God. He is a Christian. Now the Bible says in Acts chapter 11 that the apostles led their lives so much so that 
The people that saw them gave them the nickname Christians because they said, these people are just like Christ. So the word Christian is a nickname that was given to the believers. But these days, so many people call themselves Christians. It's not for fashion. It's not for show. If you are called a Christian, then you must exhibit the character of Christ. You must show Christ to the world. Christ must be seen in you. The world must see Christ in you. Your life should be challenging. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't behave like the worldly people behave. Then what is the difference? Amen. Amen. We should show the character and the life of Christ. And it's a challenge to all of us. Jesus left off and we are we are to continue from where Jesus left off by showing forth the glory of the Father to the world. The second purpose for which Jesus came down here on earth was that he came to show us the love of God. He came to show us the love of God. So first of all, he showed us how God is like or who God is like. Then secondly, he came to show us the love of God. And I'm reading from 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. This is how God showed his love amongst us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Hallelujah. Amen. And therefore Christ came down to show the world the love of the Father, the love of God. Now as we've read from the verse, we've seen that love it's about sacrifice. The Bible says that God gave his only son that he had. He gave him as a sacrifice for our sins. And by the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ on the cross, he shows forth the love of the Father to all humanity. Now, if love is about sacrifice, my question to you as a believer or as a Christian listening to me today is that how much do you sacrifice for others? God showed his love by sacrificing his son for us. Now, sacrifice is something that you give up, something that you would have benefited from, but you give that thing up for the sake of others. So for the sake of others, you give that thing up. Do we lead sacrificial lives as Christians? Or are we selfish? So it's either you are selfless or you are what? You are selfish. God was not selfish. God gave his son to us as a sacrifice. How often do you sacrifice for others? Is the question. How often do you think about others before thinking about yourself? Or do you always think about yourself before you think about other people? The Christ-like nature is that you walk and live in love. You think about the good of others before you think about your own good. You think about sacrificing for others before you think about your own benefits and what you get. But there's a tendency in us as human beings that we always have to you know we always want to think of what we will get before thinking of others. 
A life of love is a life of sacrifice. And this is what Christ showed to us. He came down to show us the love that God has for us. And that love is that God gave his son to us and sacrificed him for us to get our salvation and for our sins to be forgiven and for our sins to be washed away by the blood of Jesus. Make it a point today to lead a life of sacrifice. Show love to other people. Think more about other people than thinking about yourself. Amen. Amen. Also, Jesus came down here to this earth or into this world to show us God's power. He came to show us the power that God has. And how did he demonstrate that? Jesus healed the sick. He demonstrated the power of God by doing what? Healing the sick, those who were sick. And I will read from Matthew chapter 4, verse 24. And this is what it says. News about him spread all over Syria. And people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, the epileptic, and the paralytic, and he healed them. Hallelujah. Amen. All kinds of sick people were brought to Jesus. Those that were demon possessed, those that were paralyzed, those that had defects in their bodies. And the Bible says that when they brought all these sick people to Jesus, he healed all of them. So he demonstrated the power of God by healing the sick. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let me ask you this question. How do you demonstrate the power of God as a Christian? When was the last time you prayed for a sick person? But as I said before, now as we're looking at the purpose of Jesus Christ here on earth, we also at the same time looking at the purpose of believers in their communities or in this world. When was the last time you prayed for the sick? <laughs> praying for the sick and praying for the healing of others is not the domain of the evangelists only. Hallelujah. We are all commanded in scripture to pray for the sick. The Bible says that you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall what? recover. So how often do you pray for the sick? And that is the question you are supposed to ask yourself as a believer. Are you demonstrating the power of God by praying for the sick? Or are you giving excuses? Or as for praying for the sick, uh, the evangelist should do it. The pastors should do it. The prophets should do it. The apostles should do it. No! Every believer has the power given to him by the Holy Spirit to pray for the sick and demonstrate God's power to the world. Amen? Amen. So since we entered this year, if you haven't prayed for the sick, you have to do so. Praying for the sick should be our daily activity. We have family members who are sick. We have mothers who are sick. We have brothers and sisters who are not feeling well. We have friends or colleagues who are not feeling well. Do we pray for them? When you go to college and a friend of yours tells you, I'm sick, I'm not feeling well. Are you able to master the boldness and tell that colleague or friend, let me pray with you and I believe that God will heal you. When you visit your family home and an auntie, an uncle or someone tells you that I'm not feeling well, 
Are you able to master that boldness as a believer in Christ Jesus and pray for that auntie or pray for that uncle to demonstrate the power of God? Or do you leave it to the pastors to come from their homes and pray for your aunties and pray for your uncles? Amen. Amen. The purpose for which Jesus came to the earth is also the same purpose for which believers must demonstrate to the world that our Jesus is alive. He's not dead. And he's still working through us to bring healing to humanity. Amen. How did Jesus demonstrate the power of God? He demonstrated the power of God by casting out evil spirits. Jesus cast out what? Evil spirits. Now let me read from Mark chapter 1 verse 34. And this is what the Bible says. And Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons. But he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Jesus demonstrated the power of God by casting out what? Evil spirits. He cast out demons from people. And the Bible says he will not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. So when the demons wanted to speak, he, you know, he commanded them to keep quiet and commanded them to come out of the people. Amen? Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning that the deliverance ministry does not belong to special particular people. Jesus demonstrated the power of God by casting out demons. And the Bible says that, he says, in my name, you shall cast out what? Demons. You shall command them and they will leave. When was the last time you commanded a demon to leave? Tell me. But you always come to church. Some of us have been in church for 10 years, 5 years, 7 years. When a demon screams, we run away. Yes. Some people call themselves believers, but they cannot gather the boldness to stand and do deliverance on a person that is being tormented by demons. Why? They are afraid. While the Lord Jesus came here on earth to demonstrate to us the power that God has over these evil spirits. Let me ask you, if you are afraid of demons, if you are not casting out devils, let me ask you this question. Where is your faith? Now Jesus Christ said that the things that I do, greater works shall you do because I go to the Father. Now Jesus cast out devils and we are supposed to do greater than he did. Can we say we are doing greater things than Jesus did? Or do you see casting out of evil spirits as a work specified for some special people? No way. If you are a believer, you must be filled with the healing power of God. Every believer. Because the Bible says you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Every believer must be filled with the power to cast out demons. Because the Bible says that you shall command demons and they shall leave. The Bible did not specifically say pastors will do it, apostles will do it, prophets will do it. The Bible says, whosoever believe, these signs shall follow them. Have you believed? Have you believed? Yes. Okay, so if you have believed, are the signs of healing and casting out of devils following you? And these are critical questions that believers must ask themselves. It's not enough for you to come to church and sit in the chair and warm the chair and go back home. 
That is not what Christianity is about. Christianity is about action. Doing the things that God has called us to do. God has, you know, filled us with his power. He has given us his Holy Spirit. Don't just speak in tongues and go away. Tongues was given to you so that you will see the manifestation of the power of God in your life. Because Jesus told the disciples, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. What sort of power? Power to heal. What sort of power? Power to cast out devils. You speak in tongues. How many devils have you cast out? Christianity goes beyond just coming to church and enjoying the service and going back home. Christianity is about action. Christianity is about promoting the kingdom of God. And how do you promote the kingdom of God? You promote the kingdom of God by demonstrating the power of God. And I believe that if every member that attended church in this world, there are so many churches in this world, Baptist churches, Assemblies of God churches, Pentecost churches, and all the other churches, and all the charismatic churches. Now, imagine this. If every believer that attended one of these churches exercised his authority or her authority during the week, by working in healing and by casting out devils, how many converts do you think would have won to the Lord Jesus Christ? Tell me. And how many days or how many weeks do you think it would take for the church to turn the world upside down? Now, these are critical questions that we must ask. There are so many people in church, but only few are working. The power has been given to you. You can pray for the sick. You've got the power to pray for the sick. And that is why these days some prophets and some pastors have taken advantage of the congregation. And, you know, they are doing it. Because, yes, they are doing it. And therefore, when they pray for you, they will charge you. They will take money from you to pray for you. Why? Because you are not exercising your authority. That is why they will charge you. And collect money from you. But if you were exercising your authority as a believer, casting out devils and healing the sick, do you think a prophet or a pastor can take advantage of you? No. And that is why they are taking advantage of us. Every believer must rise up and do the works that Jesus came to do to show forth the glory of the Father. And we are here as representatives of Jesus to show forth the glory of Jesus and the Father. People must see Christ in us. It's not just talk. It's not mouth talk. Yes, you can tell people that you are Christian. That is mouth talk. But let's see the action. What do Christians do? What did Christ do? That's the question. And are you doing the things that Christ did? Because he said that greater works shall you do. What are your works? Even when it's a deliverance session and a demon manifests, you are pushing back. You are just drawing back. And some people intentionally draw back. Then they push the pastors and the elders forward. You go and face it. Then they... Are you a Christian? It's Christ in you. Let us do the things that Christ did. Hallelujah. Amen. Then, the third thing that Christ did to demonstrate the power of God was that he performed miracles. Jesus performed what? Yeah. Miracles. Now, I'm reading from Mark chapter 4. Verses 37 to 41. And what does it say? I read. A furious squall came up. And the waves broke over the, the boat. So that it was nearly swamped. 
Jesus got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet! Be still. <laughs> then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. His disciples were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is time for believers to demonstrate the God who is the miracle working power God. Amen. 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 When we demonstrate the power of God in miracles, the atheist, people who don't believe in God, everyone will just search. Now, in Acts chapter 3, we are told that Peter and John were going to the temple to pray. And they met a man at the beautiful gate. And this man was crippled in his legs. He was asking for money. And when he asked Peter and John for money, Peter looked at him and said, Silver and gold have we none. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, do what? Rise up and walk. And the man, this lame man, rose up and started jumping. The Bible says he was limping. Then he started jumping. And when people saw that he was jumping and limping around the apostles, the crowd gathered around the apostles and they started preaching to them about the Lord Jesus who had made this lame man whole. Hallelujah. Amen. Then in Acts chapter 4, they were taken to the Sanhedrin and to the priests and to the Pharisees and all the big, big shots. And they were being questioned. Didn't we tell you that you should not preach in the name of this man again? And why are you preaching in his name to bring his blood upon our heads? The Bible says that they threatened the apostles. Okay, they threatened them. But what they could not deny was a lame man who had been what? Healed. So the Bible says that all they could do was to beat them and tell them and warn them and threaten them not to preach in the name of Jesus again. Because the man who had been healed was evidence of the power, the miraculous working power of the Lord. And this was evidence that the Lord Jesus whom they killed, they killed the wrong person. And he was still alive to working through the disciples and in his name, people were getting healed. If we demonstrate the miraculous power of God, we will turn the world upside down for the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people are doing it, but they are doing it in the wrong way. They've gone for powers that are not of God. And they are doing that not to glorify the name of Jesus, but just to benefit themselves. So they do that, they get the crowd, and they take advantage of the crowd and take money from them. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about demonstrating the genuine power of God that draws the attention of people to the Lord Jesus Christ. That he alone is the healer, and he alone is the miracle worker. And in that miracle, people begin to see the glory of God and repent. That is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about miracles that draw attention to particular people or personalities. Where they used to take money from people. That is a waste of time. But my word to you today is that those of us who are genuine should rise up. Because if those of us who are genuine sit down, then the fake ones will use fake miracles to draw attention of people and lead them to hell. And therefore, if you are genuine, rise up and demonstrate the genuine miracle power of God and people will see the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. We've kept quiet for so long. It's time for us to rise and come out. Amen. Amen. And then, the fourth thing that Jesus did to demonstrate the power of God was that he raised the dead. Jesus did what? 
raised the dead. People who were dead were raised back to life. Lazarus was raised back to life. And before Jesus raised Lazarus, he prayed a prayer. He said, Father, I know that it's for the sake of those who are gathered here. Then he screamed, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out. When was the last time he raised the dead? Even praying for miracles is a problem. Praying for people to get healed. We are afraid. Casting out devils, we are running away. How much more put him in front of a corpse and ask him to pray over a dead person to come back to life? I think he will just melt into the ground. He will melt into the ground. It's about time we demonstrated the power, the genuine power of God. If we don't do it, the fake ones will do it. I'm telling you. If you sit down and keep quiet and talk and talk and talk and criticize and criticize and criticize, your criticisms is not going anywhere. Get up, rise, and do it. And let the world see the difference between the genuine and the fake. That is what I'm saying. Jesus raising people from the dead shows that God has power over the life of men. It's God who decides who lives and who goes. You understand? If God had decided that I wasn't going to see it today, I would not be here today. You understand what I'm saying? He has the power over life and death. And he demonstrated that through the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, if you are up today and you have seen today, it is only by his grace and by his purpose and his determination that you should see today. That is why you are seeing today. You are not alive today because you are so beautiful. And you are not alive today because you are so wise and you are so intelligent and because you are PhD. People are professors. They didn't wake up this morning. People have money upon money. They didn't wake up this morning because God determined that this morning they will not see it. We are worshipping the one who has the resurrection power. And he is the one that decides that you shall live and you will live. When he decides that you will be dead, <laughs> you are dead. And that is why he told his disciples, listen, do not fear the one who can kill the body, but cannot determine the destination of the soul. But fear him who has power over the body, and after killing the body, he can also determine where the soul will be. Fear that one. And he is the only one that we are to fear in this universe. Hallelujah. Amen. He is the only one we are to fear in this universe. Fear no man. Fear no man. Man has no power over your soul. Man has no power over your spirit. They can kill you physically, but they cannot kill your soul. They cannot kill your spirit. They cannot determine where your soul and your spirit will spend eternity. But fear the one who's got power to determine both the physical and the spiritual. It's time for us to rise and show forth the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, as you're listening to me, and as I bring my message to an end, if you don't know this Jesus that I'm talking about, you have to submit your life to him today. Invite him to come into your heart and be the Lord of your life. And if you genuinely do that, He will heal the sick through you. He will cast out demons through you. He will perform miracles through you. And He will even raise the dead through you. 
But the last point emphasizes that he is the one that determines that whether you live to see today or not. And he's the one that has power over your physical body and your spirit your, and your soul as well. Where do you want to spend eternity? Do you want to spend eternity with God? Or you want to spend eternity in hell? Give your life to Jesus and submit yourself to him. And I want to invite you for us to pray this simple prayer. If you haven't given your life to Jesus. And just say this prayer after me. That Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. And this day I commit my life to you. I surrender my life to you. I invite you to come into my heart. And forgive me of all my sins. And be the Lord and Master of my life. God bless you for listening. See you next week. Amen. Amen.